Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at the 2017 Ms. Pac-Man plug and play by MSI Entertainment. And first of all, I really like these stickers. They're very retro, remind me of the arcade art. Very cool. You have some kind of mushy buttons here, which you really don't need the buttons for much in Ms. Pac-Man, and an oversized joystick that feels kind of cheap. It's a very lightweight unit. Got the on-off switch, the little LED light tells us it's working. It runs on three AAA batteries, and you have your standard RCA uh, cables with the mono out. So let's go ahead and take Ms. Pac-Man, plug it in my TV, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. This Ms. Pac-Man plug and play was published by MSI Entertainment and came out in 2017. I previously covered the terrible 2016 Space Invaders plug and play MSI Entertainment made in episode 363. The Space Invaders plug and play only had one game, Space Invaders, and it wasn't the arcade version but rather the poor Famicom version instead. We have a similar situation here. This Ms. Pac-Man plug and play only has one game, Ms. Pac-Man, and once again, it's not the arcade version but rather the 1993 version Namco made for the NES. But does it fare any better than the Space Invaders plug and play? Let's find out. According to the manual, the objective of the game is to have fun and survive as long as possible while constantly improving your skills and eating as many dots, fruits, pretzels, energizer dots, and eliminating as many ghosts as you can. There are two modes of play, Arcade, which is supposed to simulate the arcade difficulty, and Hard, which is supposed to be even tougher. This is a little confusing as in some games, the arcade difficulty is used for the hard difficulty, so in this game you kind of have two different hard difficulties. When you start the game, you use the joystick to move Ms. Pac-Man around. You get 10 points per dot, 50 points per energizer dot, which by the way, I prefer Duracell dots, and while energized by one energizer dot, you get 200 points for eating the first ghost, 400 points for the second, 800 points for the third, and 1600 points if you eat all four ghosts with one single energizer. You also get 100 points for eating cherries, 200 points for strawberries, 500 points for oranges, 700 points for pretzels, 1,000 points for apples, 2,000 points for pears, and 5,000 points for bananas. Get 10,000 points and you earn an extra life. Clear the maze of all the dots and you move on to a new maze, sometimes with more valuable bonus fruits and pretzels to eat. Clear enough mazes and you will get to see a cutscene. Lose all your lives and your game is over without an option to continue. Graphically speaking, for an NES game, I think this is a nice looking version of Ms. Pac-Man. Sound and music wise, the game does a good job as well. Family friendly wise, even though this plug and play wasn't rated, it's worthy of an E for everyone rating. Currently, this retails for about $20 to $25 in places like Walmart, Toys R Us, and Amazon. So what do I think of the Ms. Pac-Man TV game plug and play by MSI? Well, at least they picked a better version of the game than they did with Space Invaders, but I still think it's crazy to charge $20 for a single game and not even bother to try to use the arcade version instead of an 8-bit version. And while this version of the game is not bad by itself, this cheap controller really brings it down. Usually when I play Ms. Pac-Man, when I die, it's because of me, but the vast majority of the times I died in this version, it was because of the joystick not responding to a turn I wanted to do. A game like Ms. Pac-Man needs a precision controller and this cheap joystick is anything but, really taken away from a decent version of the game. So with only one single game, if you want to plug and play with Ms. Pac-Man, I'd recommend tracking down a used version of the Ms. Pac-Man TV games plug and play by Jack Pacific I reviewed a few years ago way back in episode 14, back before I reached my current level of mediocrity. Boy, I shudder at some of my early stuff. At least in that plug and play you got the arcade style version of Ms. Pac-Man and extra games as well. This version almost tries to pretend to be that version, but it's not even close. So where am I going to rank the 2017 MSI Ms. Pac-Man plug and play? Pretty low. I will say it is better than their Space Invaders plug and play, but that's it. To me, the joystick is so bad I'd rather play some poker or free sell on the poor casino plug and play at 23. And that system isn't anything special either. So out of the 25 plug and plays I've now ranked, the MSI Ms. Pac-Man is ending in the 24 position after it tried to turn out of it but failed to do so. Please, please MSI, stop releasing plug and plays that contain only one inferior port of a game housed in a low quality joystick. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please click like and subscribe and follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank all my extraordinary Patreon supporters, including Richard. Thank you, Richard. If you'd like to support the show and gain access to exclusive content, you could do so by signing up at patreon.com slash noswearegamer. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Noswear Gamer. 
take care and go play a good version of Ms. Pac-Man, which compared to this one would be just about any version. Even give me the fun Atari 2600 version, as long as I can play it with a real joystick. Or a Sega Genesis controller. That'll work too.